So in this question, we're told that Jackson is trying to find the density in grams per centimetre cubed of a block of wood. The block of wood is in the shape of a cuboid. And we're told that he measures the length as 13.2 centimetres, and that's correct to the nearest millimetre. Measures the width as 16 centimetres, correct to the nearest millimetre, and then the height as 21.7 centimetres, correct to the nearest millimetre. He then measures the mass as 1,970 grams, correct to the nearest 5 grams. And we're asked to, by considering bounds, work out the density of the wood, given our answer to a suitable degree of accuracy. And we're told that we must show our working and give a reason for the final answer that we come to. Now, instantly here, when we're looking at the phrases correct to the nearest, I'm instantly thinking that we're going to be working with bounds and we're going to be working with an upper and lower bound for density in the end using upper and lower bounds of mass and volume. Now if I have a look, the units for density are grams per centimetre cubed and that is mass divided by volume and here we can see we have the units of centimetres which we're going to cube basically and then the units of grams, so we don't need to do any unit conversions here. It's always a good idea just to check through and see if we're going to have to convert any units just in case. So we know that density is going to be mass divided by volume, and we're going to be looking to find an upper and lower bound for density in order to come to some kind of conclusion as to what we can work with. So an upper bound for density, we want the highest value of density possible and that's going to occur when the numerator, so the mass, is the highest value possible, so the upper bound for mass and, the and then the lower bound for volume, that's going to give us the highest value for density, so the upper bound, and the lower bound for density is going to be the opposite, so we want the lower bound for mass, so a smaller numerator and having that over a larger denominator is going to give us the lower bound here. So in order to calculate these, we're going to need to work out the upper and lower bounds of the volume and the mass. So if we start here with the mass, as it's just easier to work with, he measures 1,970 grams correct to the nearest 5 grams. So we basically need to divide this 5 by 2 to get 2.5. And then we can go 2.5 above and below this value of 1,970 to get the bounds. So the upper bound of mass is 1,970 plus 2.5. So 1,972.5. And then the lower bound is it subtract 2.5. So 1,967.5. We can now go on to work out the volume, the bounds for volume. And the way that's easy to work with this, we know that the volume is going to be the length times the width times the height. So an upper bound for volume is going to be the upper bound for length times the upper bound for width times the upper bound for height, because we're simply multiplying these values together so we want to get the highest possible values of each to get a higher value in the end. So we can have a look at these and we can work out the bounds for the length, width and height. I'm going to put this into a sort of table just to make it easier to see and work with. So we, to start we have the length of 13.2, a width of 16.0 and a height of 21.7. And I can then make a column for the upper bound and the lower bound for each measurement. They're all measured to the correct nearest millimetre. So we can basically go half a millimetre above and below for the bounds here. So half a millimetre above 13.2 gives us an answer of 13.25. And then below is 13.15. And then similarly here, we can go 16.05, 15.95. So 
21.75 and then 21.65. Now we have the upper and lower bounds for the length, width and height. We can calculate the bounds for the volume. So the upper bound for volume is the upper bounds for length, width and height multiplied together. So 13.25 times 16.05 times 21.75 and that gives us an answer of 4625.4 just to one decimal place. Similarly for the lower bound for volume if we do the same thing we get an answer of 4540.9. Now we have the bounds for volume and mass we can go back in and calculate the bounds for density. So the upper bound for density we worked out to be the upper bound for mass over the lower bound for volume. So we take the upper bound for mass which we had as 1972.5 over the lower bound for volume which is 4940.9 but we'll use that to all of the decimal places that we've kept in our calculator. And that is going to give us an answer of 0 0.4344. And then the lower bound for density we have as the lower bound for mass over the upper bound for volume. We take those values and that gives us an answer of 0 0.4254. Now as we can see the lower and upper bound for density are very similar. In fact, they're the same when they're rounded to two decimal places or two significant figures. So the question is asking us to give our answer to a suitable degree of accuracy for the density of wood. So taking these bounds into account, I'm going to give my answer as 0 0.43. And I can do this because both the upper and the lower bounds in this instance for the density round to the value 0 0.43 to two decimal places or two significant figures. So that's the justification at the end. We're saying that this is accurate because the upper bound and lower bound that we've calculated are going to round to 0 0.43 to two decimal places. So it wouldn't be appropriate to round to any more decimal places in this instance. As for how the marks are awarded here, we'd gain a mark for working out one of the bounds. So for example, for the upper bound for mass, we'd gain a mark here. We'd gain a second mark for finding the bounds for volume that we've calculated here. We would then gain a third mark for a correct process to find the bounds for density. So if you're using this sort of formula here and the right general idea. would then gain a, another mark for both of the correct bounds for density to three significant figures at least. And then the final mark is for this conclusion here and the final answer of 0 0.43.